Hey guys, welcome back. So I have just finished the Jurassic Park book from the last video. You can definitely go check that one out. And it is time to select the next prompt. If you're new to this channel, this is something I've been doing for the, this year. I started with 116 prompts to read for a reading challenge for this year. So I put all of the prompts in this basket and I pick a new prompt, select a book to go with that prompt for each video. You can look below for all the videos in the series so far, and we are on to the sixth pick. So I guess let's just go ahead and do it. Okie dokie. Do I think there's anything I'm hoping for? Maybe one by an indigenous author? Maybe romanticy? Anyways, all right. I don't know if there's any that I'm like afraid of. All right, this one isn't too bad. It is. Number four starts with the letter L. I don't know. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go look around my bookshelves and see what I come up with. Hey guys, how's it going? So um, it's been a couple of weeks since we've talked and I have been making a little bit of progress in this. I'm about 80 pages in and so far I am really liking it at this very moment in time. <laughs> Well, okay, so what's happened in the past couple of weeks is like we went on vacation. Um, I've been reading Queen of Shadows, which is over there, and I really don't feel like grabbing it. I'm actually getting a really bad headache right now, and I just took some medicine. When we got home from vacation, we had a lot of projects to do, so we were actually redoing our backyard. We've been working on our backyard, which was really difficult, um, and then I've suddenly been having car problems and it's just been kind of like one thing after the next it's been incredibly busy today was like the first day where things were actually kind of normal again and now I'm in catch-up mode we went to the gym today and I spent like an hour on the elliptical machine which felt really really good because cardio I hate cardio <laughs> I really hate cardio and then the day before that I was at yoga again as well but I still haven't really got to read yet today because I finished up uh, working on another video but it feels really good to have that video done and out of the way so that now I can focus on the next book and next video. I'm about 80 pages into this so far and so far it's been kind of a, a slow build up. A main character lost her husband, I think it was like a year prior, and she's relied on her mother-in-law for a lot of help, and now she and her daughter are actually going to be moving out of their home and moving in with their mother-in-law. She ends up finding like a postcard from this lost lake, and so she and her daughter decide to go take a little mini trip out there, and they don't even know if it's still there. Lo and behold, it is but they are going to be going through some changes as well. This may be the very last time that this lost lake is there as well. It seems like our main character had been so reliant. I don't know what the situation was and I think that we're gonna get more and more of like what her life was like and why she's become so dependent on her mother-in-law which it seems like it's not the best situation like it seems like her mother-in-law might be very controlling and she's had to make a lot of like sacrifices and like even her parenting style and everything else to just kind of be compliant with her mother-in-law's wishes because of how much she's doing for her which that just does not sit right with me at all she needs to get on her own two feet and so i think she's going to find her way through this through through all of this so um but yeah anyways so far so good He does not fit in there, like at all. <laughs> Look. 
He's falling out. <laughs> I know I'm laughing at you. You're so cute. All right, we have a little bit of a different uh, view here. We're actually in my backyard. Remember, I think in my previous video, I had talked about how, oh, that is creepy. That is a big ass fucking spider. It's like this long. Um, I think in my previous video, I had talked about how we had like a week worth of really hard work. We were working in our backyard. Um, well, it's almost done. It's almost the hard part of the job is done which was pouring concrete um i guess i could flip the camera around and show you guys actually you know what let me just take some pictures okay so from the pictures you'll be able to see like the concrete slabs that uh we poured and stamped to make it kind of look like pebbles pebble stones or stone or whatever and then in between in the slots we're gonna have to get some rock and we're gonna fill in those spaces with rock obviously our backyard is a work in progress so the grass probably won't grow back until next spring that is so much better i decided to come out here and read some of this book lost lake making pretty good progress um i i'm eager to finish this book and my other book before we go on vacation we're gonna go on vacation for like a good full six days and i don't want to take any physical books i might have one little physical book to take but it's like teeny tiny i really just want to take my kindle and my phone and that's it i don't want to take any other devices um so i'm trying to pack extremely light I am really bad over packer, so bad. Um, I and I think that just comes because I'm so comfortable at home and I don't know what to do like without my home comforts. We don't travel a whole lot. I'm really trying to make sure that I finish all of my physical books. The next vacation we're taking actually is in two weeks. We're leaving the first week of July. We are going to be going to San Diego. Um, we have quite the journey to get there. We are actually going to be driving up to Nashville to catch a flight. Then we have like a five hour layover. I forget where our layover is. Um, but yeah, we're going to have a five hour layover. We do have uh, lounge privileges. So that's going to be incredible. I love when we have gotten to use the lounge before like it makes a layover like easy peasy like they have snacks and things so the kids really enjoy i hate buying airport food it's so incredibly expensive standing in lines it's just a nightmare i hate that is adorable wait wait wait, wait. Hold on. let's go back here okay this book is starting to pick up pace i'm really really enjoying it actually i'm just falling in love with this now and i can't wait to see how it all unfolds so devon is this little girl she is kate's daughter no one believes me about the alligator devon said turning away from the lake and mom even saw him on the road coming here i'm not making him up do you believe me bulladine smiled sure i do one person alone can't do it. I've learned that. But two people? That's a done deal. If two people believe in the same thing, it's automatically real. That made Devin feel better. He wants me to know things, and then he won't tell me. It's frustrating. He's an alligator, and they're single-minded, those alligators. They don't focus on much except what's right in front of them. You're right, Devin said. He needs my help. Where to? Bolding clapped her hands and rubbed them together. Anything else you want to see? No, we better get back. I think I heard Wes's van. He says he's coming by to help things. Yeah. Anyway, this is so cute. I love Devin. <laughs> we got some like love story connections going on. We have a character named Jack who is a very quiet kind of person. Um, not a very social person, which works out great because the girl of his dreams is Lizette, who she doesn't speak. She writes her words on paper to give to people to hear her and um so she's an incredibly quiet person herself so hey it like is meant to be right and then we have wes who was childhood friends with kate and now they have been kind of put back together where i live we actually live very close to the airport i mean everything is close to us it's actually until it's like a city but it's 
quite a small place also and uh, we live incredibly 10 minutes from the airport so we get a lot of noise so anyways Wes and Kate on the last summer that they sped together they had she was 12 like they're kids okay but like things in their relationship had just begun to change and flourish a little bit Wes has always had a thing for her she just didn't want to have to make time for that she just wanted to go and explore and have fun I feel like I could see myself in her a little bit with just you know wanting to just go and play and all that stuff um but now that they're adults like sparks be flying again but also Wes is kind of like no too much has changed and Kate's been through a lot of stuff um anyways 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 okay he'd been so busy watching her that he'd wants to hit once he wants he wants fuck i cannot fucking talk today he'd been so busy watching her that he'd once hammered his thumb with his mallet jack had given him an understanding look some women just make you forget yourself no oh. Selma is another character in here who is an older woman. She's been married like seven times or something like that. Um, and she, we finally get a chapter of hers, like before this, we finally get a chapter about her and her past. And in Sarah Addison Allen's books, there's always some sort of magical realism. So there's like a subtle or not so subtle magical element to them and so we get our first magical element with Selma and you kind of understand you get to understand that maybe this gift of being desirable by men is maybe not a gift after all and I just I have this whole new appreciation and understanding for Selma like at first she was just kind of this character in the background that was just all about Kate and Bulladine even also was kind of in the background and Ebby so it's more about Lizette, Ebby, Kate, and Devin um but now Sem Selma has found not a center stage but like she's come to the forefront of being a very interesting character and um yeah so I have a feeling we're going to meet her final love the one that counts so I have a feeling yeah they were gonna end this on such a good note. Anyways, we'll stop running the camera for now. What? So Kate is talking to Bulladine, and Bulladine says that she was a late reader. She didn't learn to read till she was about seven years old, which I can completely identify to. And she learned to read by reading Jane Eyre. And I literally was just talking about Jane Eyre today. Uh, she loved books so much and that's why she taught literature. It always made me feel sneaky and giddy, like I was getting away with something. I always thought that at any moment someone was going to tell me to put down my books and get a real job. Have you read all these? Kate asked, indicating to the wall of bookshelves. Everyone. Kate laughed. Abby should update her library then. No, I've read enough. Bulladine finished her sandwich and licked her fingertips. I never thought I'd say that, but it's true. Why do you keep coming back here, Bulladine, when everyone else stopped? Because life is my books, and these days, and every summer here, is a new chapter. Ever read a story that you simply can't imagine how it will end? This place is like that. The best things in life are like that. My husband had Alzheimer's. You'd think that would be the end of the story, wouldn't you? A brilliant man who loses his mind. The end. But every once in a while, when I'm visiting him in the nursing home, he'll turn to me and suddenly start talking about Flaubert. Then he'll ask me how our sons are doing, as long as he's still there, as long as this place is still here. The story goes on. I don't know if I explained this before, but the Lost Lake is about to be sold to some developers and um this is kind of like their last summer the last raw memories so we have people who've come every year we have new people we have all these different characters and as kate is going around and getting to know them and having these conversations we are learning each character 
has a piece of them at Lost Lake, whether it's memories or just just something. And it also feels like other than Lost Lake, their lives outside of Lost Lake, they're struggling with something. I'm not going to lie. It's making me quite a bit emotional when I think about some of these characters. Like, I can't believe how much I am growing so attached to these characters. Like, even just there, like, this is the first time we really uh, get to know more about Bola Dean. So this is like her chapter where we get to know about her. And I am so sorry. We got helicopters, we got sirens, all this crap. I kind of figured this out quite a while ago. It's even more... It weighs heavier now with every new story that we get, every new layer, every new character that we learn more about, um, that it seems that Lost Lake is kind of like a euphemism for all of these characters who feel lost and they need a place to come and be and this is one place they feel like home when they feel so lost out in the world. I love that and I also love that Lost Lake is kind of a secret place. It almost feels like you're in this elite club if you know about Lost Lake and I fucking love that. I will say this book is slow to start but like it is picking up in such a big way it's like slowly unfurling slowly unraveling within me i see myself finishing this tonight but right now i'm starting to overheat it's not gonna look pretty here in a few minutes so um, i'm gonna call it here and i will catch up probably when i finish my son is um playing in the game room right there so you can hear him talking to his friend so I decided that I'm going to actually make some rice balls with the leftovers of dinner. I just made so much rice um, and I don't think we're going to eat it in time. I really don't like reheated rice because like if you put like some water in it and then reheat it, it will reheat up pretty well, but usually like only once I feel like, otherwise it gets too dried out. Rice balls are a really good way to kind of reuse that rice. The boys are gonna love them. I've got my white rice here. I actually do, let me show you what kind of rice I use because it actually matters. Okay, so this is actually the rice that I use. It is a short grain rice. This is the only white rice I can get really sticky. Like apparently we don't have any rice here in the United States that will get like Japanese sticky rice. Or it could be a little bit of how we prepare it, but I actually had a friend back in Colorado who um, was from Japan and she was telling me that. Um, I'm not really sure what, what the difference is or why, but I feel like this is the best rice that you can get. And then there is a preparation for it. Like you need to soak it. I don't soak it for as long as they recommend. I just kind of, I soak it for like maybe 10 minutes at most. And then I wash the rice and pour out the water because it will get really milky looking. So I will fill up with clean water, wash it, um, dump, the ri dump the milky water. And I do that until I can start seeing through the water. That will help it get a little bit more sticky as well. And I picked these up. I picked these up at like at one of our Asian markets around here. I have two different packets of flavors. There's a, I forget what the name is for these things. I actually have one of these too, but I thought I would use these packets before I use this. Um, but it's called, I cannot pronounce that. Can you, can you read that? Free cocky. They come in all these different flavors. You can order them online. And so you can't really read the instructions unless you can read Japanese. I can't read Japanese, so. Oh, this one's kind of nice. They actually put a label that's in English, has like what's in it, but it doesn't give you instructions. It's super easy. All you do is you mix it into your rice, however much you want. <laughs> so, and then I have a bowl of water here because the rice is gonna stick to your hands so bad. The best way to keep it from sticking to your hands and sticking to each other is keeping your hands wet um, or any surface. While we're making these rice balls, I thought I would talk a little bit about my reading so far. So I was going to finish reading Lost Lake last night. I have under 100 pages to go. I was really, really liking it. 
But then um, last night when I was kind of tidying up my room, I started listening to an audiobook that I had checked out called Beach Reads by Emily Henry. And I ended up listening to the entire book until I was done. I stayed up until midnight listening to that book. I just sat on my couch and I was scrolling. I was organizing like my folders and stuff like that on Libby for my library um, because they were just tossed everywhere. So I was kind of giving them new tags and organizing them a little bit more. I was squealing. I was crying. Not like crying, crying, but I, I was, there were tears. I could not stop listening to it at all. I could not believe especially for me because i do not i don't read contemporary romance really i have read contemporary romance and i can't tell you that i've given any of them more than like three stars at some point every single like contemporary romance i have read kind of starts to fall into the same patterns that i just got just don't like they're surface level they're like whatever or there's the spicy scenes are written in a way that i'm just like they're so cringy and i could not believe my reaction to it i was literally so floored and i was considering updating last night while i was like in the moment like something i have also noticed that I haven't really liked in books is books about writers. I, have, I haven't I have read a lot of books about writers. I read one by Meg Wolitzer called The Wife. She was also a writer. Her husband was a writer. I attempted reading Yellow Face. I there was like maybe one or two more and like every single time I just don't like it. And lo and behold, this is about two writers they end up working and I was almost really hesitant also because of the concept of these two authors writing each other's genres okay um, and I was like oh this is so predictable like obviously they're gonna be writing they're gonna be like living vicariously through their books obviously and I don't know why I just I don't like that much coincidence but somehow it worked so freaking well because it was so intentional and maybe that's what made it so good because the lead up to it and it wasn't even like so on point to the lives are actually living it was it did stray away a bit but there were some common themes and lessons learned or whatever like I don't know, it was different enough, but similar enough. How we got to that point just worked so freaking well, where other books that are kind of like this, where they use that kind of coincidence, they don't do it well. <laughs> okay, so here's the first one. I made them into little triangles. Obviously, you can make them whatever shape you want. The triangle seems to be pretty common. And you can already see that the spice pieces, like this, these green bits, that seaweed, and it has fluffed up a little bit. You can actually tell the difference. You can see the sesame seeds. The orange is probably carrot or some sort of pepper. That also, this could either be mushroom or plum. I'm really not sure. Um, but yeah, so you can tell the difference. This isn't super good. So. Um, I'm gonna take my hands and I dip them all the way in the water. You can feel the rice like residue on my on your hands. So I try to rinse that off before I grab another ball ball and leave your hands like dripping wet and then just grab like I don't know, like a handful and then you just kind of keep pressing it like you would press like hamburger meat or whatever. Yeah, I guess you could we can probably make them quite a bit larger than that too. Um, let's see. So yeah, I just kind of keep pressing it together. I guess it's, it's it's kind of hard. So so like I made it into like a flat pancake shape, and now I'm just kind of taking my fingertips and just kind of forming that peak. Um, 
And then once I got that going, then I'll just kind of gently tap the bottom to kind of make it a flat bottom to get that triangle shape or use like my hand and then kind of squish and mold it to a triangle. There we go. I don't generally like tortured soul. I've been hurt before. Um, I'm going to be intentionally evasive in order to like move the plot along. And this book has that, but it's done so well. The main male character, he is kind of broody and stuff like that. And when you find out why, you're like, oh, I get it. One of the reasons why he is I probably wouldn't have understood if I hadn't almost gone there before. And I understand now, I don't think you can understand that kind of pain that comes with what happens unless you've been there. I didn't understand before that happened to me. I have so much more empathy for people who have gone through this and I just see how destructive that is on so many different levels. I really felt for him and understood where he's coming from. Usually in, in, in other books I have, I have read, the reasoning is always just, it comes down to like someone being, like I said, just evasive or like, I don't owe you anything. When they circle back around on that issue, he was very like, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to, you know, make you feel that way. And again, it's just, it's so believable. It's so realistic. It, I did like our female character because sometimes it seemed like maybe she was being a little dramatic, maybe being a little too needy, but then you kind of also understand where she's coming from and her fears, especially because she thought he was one way. I cannot believe that I have found a contemporary romance that I rated five stars. I never thought I would see the day. I actually pretty much had written it off, but I felt that, you know, summer, I'm just feeling it, you know, so let's just see how it goes. And I didn't expect to connect with it so much. And I was okay with that. I wasn't looking to have like a fantastic five star. Now suddenly I'm like, well, maybe I just wasn't reading the right romance. So now maybe I just need to try out a lot more. And uh, I'm definitely going to be reading more Emily. I will be probably reading every single Emily Henry book ever now. This container is full. But Good morning. We got my buddy Sora here. Don't walk on the computer, please. Yeah, don't walk on the computer. See, this... Sometimes I put whipped cream in my coffee. And he loves whipped cream. I have made a monster of him. That's probably why you're knocking on my door this morning. Uh, why are you walking on the desk? Over here. There's a good boy. Come on. I don't know. I don't know whipped cream for you. Come here. <laughs> Yeah, he even knows where we keep it in the refrigerator now. So now he's like sitting next to the refrigerator. So I did not really read any more of The Lost Lake yesterday either or even after I went to bed last night. I am so tired this morning. I have like under 100 pages to go. I want to finish reading this. I want to read as much as I can this morning. I definitely am going to finish this today. I'm going to sit down this morning and read and then I'm going to go make waffles for the kids, Michael has been saying that he would like some waffles. He said he would try to cook them this morning, but that's not going to happen. <laughs> we'll probably go to the gym. That's what I wanted to say. So I mentioned last night that I had read, yeah, Emily Henry's book. And I was thinking, oh, that's going to count as my summer book. But I just realized, I don't know when that is set. It's supposed, the book, the challenge is to read a book that is set in the summer. Book always pops up for best summer reads. But is it actually set in summer? This one's set in summer, but I'm using this for a different challenge. So I actually might have to come back around to that one. Okay, it is now like 5.30. I've been out quite a while. I 
dumped off a bunch of stuff at Goodwill donations. I also decided to stop off at Second and Charles. Let me go ahead and show you what I've got. I don't think I'm gonna do a book haul this month. We actually have acquired a few things, um, but I've already kind of like shelved them. But I will show you what I found today and actually yesterday as well when we went to the library. My library has like a little mini bookshop. Like so much stuff there. Everything's like a dollar, a dollar. I first got the first two. Actually, this is only a trilogy, so I'm only missing one book of the whole set. But I have Wither and Fever, and I'm not gonna lie, I definitely was attracted to the series by the cover art, so I'm hoping that I don't get screwed like all the other times I go for cover buys. And I hope this story is actually really good. I did some vetting for a while and it sounds really good. In a not too distant future, genetic engineering has turned every newborn into a ticking time bomb. Males die at the age of 25, females die at the age of 20. While scientists seek a miracle antidote, young girls are routinely kidnapped and sold as polygamous brides to bear more children. When 16-year-old Ryan is taken, she enters a world of wealth and privilege that both entices and terrifies her. She has everything she's ever wanted except for free. Soon it becomes clear that not everyone at her new husband's home is who, how they appear. With the help of Gabriel, a servant Ryan is growing dangerously attracted to, Ryan attempts to escape before her time runs out. The next two I was incredibly excited to find. These are the first two books in a series that a YouTuber that I follow is in love with. She says it's like an all-time favorite series. I think there's four total books and I'm so sorry. I feel horrible because I've been watching her channel for maybe a year, under a year-ish, that I should remember her name and I'm so sorry. I, I forgot it, but she does like the, these really cool TBR jars. In fact, I sort of modeled my own TBR jar after hers. Um, and then when I'm done doing my TBR baskets, I'm going back to like the Read It or Haul It TBR jar. So I got the first two books of this series. Elena Ferrente, and the first one is My Brilliant Friend. I cannot believe I found this in pristine condition for $1.50. And then book two, the story of a new name. The next one is just a collected stories of Willa Cather. Cather, Cather, oh my God. Um, Willa Cather, collected stories. A ruined beauty whose dignity has survived a lifetime of loss and detachment. A Czech immigrant who finds a paradoxical contentment on the harsh expanse of Nebraska prairie. A solitary young paint for, painter buying raptly and guiltily on his exquisite neighbor. These are some of the lives that Willa Cather renders with a fine balance of compassion and detachment. This one just looks so fun. It is called The Zombie Survival Guide. Look on the back, it says top 10 lessons for surviving a zombie attack. It reminds me of that movie Zombieland, The Godfather by Mario Puzo. This, I have seen the movies, but I am Italian. My family lived in Chicago back in the day. I'm just saying, it is a crime I haven't read this. Also, I actually got it in my head to look out for this book because actually this should be on the list too anyways i found the sicilian which is a sequel to the godfather so now i will catch up with my heritage okay and then the last two i was incredibly excited to find i have been trying to say it was when i lived in florida and then also i think there was a bookshop i used to go to in colorado where they used to have like a whole section of all the Buffy and Angel books. And I passed by it so many freaking times. And I was like, oh no, no, no. I'm not gonna be getting like novelizations of the show. I would just watch the show. I really miss an opportunity because there are so many books that aren't, they are not novelizations. They're like fan fiction books, which I wasn't sure I was gonna be into. But now things have changed and I just, I really want to get my hands on them. The first one is Seven Crows, Buffy and Angel and Riley, question mark. So in this story, we have Buffy and Angel. Buffy and Angel go and meet up with Riley and his wife in Mexico uh, because they needed help with some big bad, probably. Things, things get heated. I don't know. It's kind of a cool story. And then this one, I walked around the store for a while and I was like, this wasn't exactly what I was looking for. I don't really want to get into like TV media books. I don't really like that sort of thing. However, I changed my mind on this. And this is an unofficial and unauthorized guide to the final season of Buffy Vampire Slayer by Keith Topping. This is in regards to season seven. And the reason I decided to go ahead and keep it was pop culture references, soundtrack information, and draws attention to the times when logic flies out the window. There are sections on the extensive media coverage of the series finale, 
the internet realm of Buffy and what happens next in the world of vampires, witches, watchers, and slayers. I am very interested in the pop culture references. I kind of have a secret video project I want to do with all my Buffy videos. This will kind of assist me in that venture. So, okay, well, that is everything. I'm going to go up and finish Lost Lake. Hey guys, okay, it's about 8 30. It took me a really long time. I got distracted watching some YouTubers, YouTube videos. What else was I? I don't even know. I don't even know. Okay. Like I just, either way, I'm so pleased. I finished it. I finished Lost Lake. And this book had several moments where I was just so excited and just, just happy, good feels. And then other moments where I was just like almost to tears at some things. And like, I just, ugh. this is magical realism. And the way that like the magical realism comes into play is like so cute and interesting, I guess. Like it kind of slowly creeps in and then you're like, oh, I guess it's because I have read Sarah Addison Allen before so I kind of understand her writing style I would say that it is similar like it just feels like a contemporary drama or whatever it is like story kind of slowly unfolds and then there's like little bits and breadcrumbs of like the the magic that could be there but it could just be your imagination but maybe it's magical and then when everything kind of ties itself together you're just like oh magical moments I love it okay I'm sorry I'm like gushing over this book but I know it's really weird like I don't do that often and I think it's just because I don't do a lot of these like instant reactions right when I'm reading so um I love this book. This is really good. You should read it. <laughs> I was watching another YouTuber that was talking about all of Sarah Addison Allen's books. I think she's probably read every single book she's written. I'm not there yet, but I'm working my way there. I have two more on my shelves. I think I have The Peach Keeper and Other Birds. And I actually have The Peach Keeper set aside to read for another challenge when it comes up. I think there is a challenge for food in the title so uh i also haven't read the sugar queen or something like that so the light is really really abrasive i don't know how long this vlog is going to be it's i haven't done a vlog like this in so freaking long we're actually kind of like share a little bit more about our lives i just i know my vlogs were getting really boring or it was just like two updates <laughs> so and we're actually like home and I finally figured out how to share stuff on my phone so it makes it easier to add little bits of videos for my everyday life. Oh also <laughs> I have made it past the halfway mark of my goal. My goal is to read 200 books for the year. I have made it to 102. I don't know if you can see that. <sighs> you can't see that at all. And it says also I'm seven books ahead of schedule, which is actually great because, okay, so seven books ahead of schedule. If I have to read one book for every two days, that means for 14 days, if I only read one book in 14 days, then I'll still be on track. I'm going to jump in on the Game of Tomes book of July and August. They're going to be reading 1Q84 by Haruki Murakami. So I'm going to read that book. I'm probably actually going to vlog that and that's going to be for the challenge to read a book with a number in the title. That's a massively huge book. It's over a thousand pages. I'm probably going to be reading some other stuff while I'm reading that book, but I'm so excited. Do you know how many years I have put that on my TBR to read and I haven't read it yet? I'm very, very excited to finally be reading that. And so I actually updated a video on what I'm going to be reading this summer. <laughs> I kind of feel like I want to do like what I'm going to be reading in July or what I'm going to be reading in July, August because it's completely changed. Of course it changed. Every time I make a TBR video, it changes. So um, what's up next is, so what I'm going to be reading next actually is um, I found the next two spy families at the library. So uh, I have number three and number five, which I know that's really weird because I read one and two. I had to skip three because I didn't have it, but I checked out four when they had it and now they have three, five, and seven or something like, or five, yeah, five, seven, and eight or something. I don't remember what they have. So we're going to go back in time a little bit, read number three, and then catch up to number five. So 
I'm so excited to have more Spy Family. Like, you have no idea. It's so, so good. And then I'm also going to be finishing Queen of Shadows. These three books, physical books, is what I'm dedicating the next week on because we leave July 5th to go to San Diego for a week, and I don't want to take any physical books. I just want my Kindle. So, oh goodness. I thought I was a lot farther through this book. I'm not even halfway through. Like, it's a big boy. But... I'll be able to read it no problem. Like I can probably tackle, as slow as this week is being, I could easily probably tackle 100, 150 pages a day. I'll have it done in a few days. So anyways, there's another vlog for all that and I will see you soon. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you really enjoyed this vlog. A lot more going on. So um, yeah, I'll see you soon. Bye.